Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report, and we have, of course, our third hour Friday show, which is the uh, Preparedness, Civil Defense, Martial Law, and Earth Changes Hour. Our uh, special panel guests and co hosts are Ann Morrison, John Moore, uh, Alexander Bachman, and we've had on the past uh, uh, Robert Felix, etc. Uh, Ann and John, are you there? I'm here, Dr. Bill. I guess I'm not sure if John made it yet. He had, I know he had an important meeting, a pressing meeting. Um, he mentioned something interesting this morning to me that he thought that he got some very reliable sources from New York State, and I don't want to give the specifics though because we'll have him talk about it perhaps next week or if he can pop on later. Um, but he mentioned that this report that was put up by Obama, which is literally a dud, and I had a chance to talk to Joel Skousen, who'll be back on mid February, that uh, his so called executive order turned to become an executive memo or bulletin, which basically means he sent a post it note. Uh, to various department uh, heads, governments, and bureaucrats, which basically has no force because there had been threats in the background that if he had tried to do an executive order, he would be immediately impeached. And that's likely to have happened, actually. Um, and they also uh, had mentioned that the police officers and the SWAT teams thought that if they just started to enforce this law, which is passed in various states like New York State, if they try to enforce the New York State law, they will immediately have a target on their back because there's a number of patriot groups when they start SWAT teaming people with weapons, especially veterans, their the half life of SWAT teams and police officers will become very short indeed. It'll be probably equivalent to the half life of iodine, which is eight and a half days. <laughs> so uh, they need to realize we are armed to the teeth, and we're not going to take any more, Mr. Obama, and we'll impute your ass if you try to pass these kind of laws by executive order. And if officers try to start doing unreasonable things, now there's some reasonable things I agree with. Number one, I think we should have some way of, of checking databases to make sure people that are mentally ill, and I mean truly mentally ill, on a permanent or an ongoing basis. But if somebody has a temporary problem, let's say PTSD, and they're being treated and they're perfectly fine, certified by the doctor, they shouldn't be restrained from having guns, especially our vets returning. What they are planning to do is making doctors into snitches. If you look at this list uh, published by the NRA, um, they want doctors to be not affected by laws about medical privacy and have them become like spitznots officers. I think Obama and Biden are mentally ill. And I think that these people understand if we want to solve the problem, we need to have better, better mental health services for children. We need to realize that electronic drugs are things like Halo 2 killer games. Uh, drugs that are pushed by doctors who basically don't have more, any more sense than, uh, than a cockroach. Uh, these medical doctors are, to me, a form of mental illness themselves. In fact, 21% of the human population, adult population in America, are on these drugs, which I can clearly say take away all inhibitions for normal human behavior and restraint of murder or suicide. So I think rather than dealing with the biochemistry of the brains, like the movie years ago, one of my favorites, called Young Frankenstein, where... Dr. Frankenstein was talking about to his colleague that he had put an Abbey normal brain into the Frankenstein monster he was making. And I think what happens is we don't want to recognize that when children are given stack vaccines, genetically modified foods, and we'll get Jeffrey Smith back on, when we give children sugar out their ears, high fructose corn syrup, which is laced with mercury, with a mercury alkali extraction, <clears throat> when we have them exposed to a toxic environment of toxic video games that cause a dopamine surge every time they kill someone in virtual space. When we have pornography everywhere, we have a culture of broken homes, what the heck do we expect? And we glorify violence. So uh, you have a toxic brain glorifying violence and all restraints taken away by serotonin reuptake inhibitors. You have Columbine, you have Newton, Connecticut. So uh, they're off the mark and they're not going to increase the safety, but they're massively going to increase the burden of living where everywhere you go you need to have uh, a, a TSA type experience, body cavity searches, and luckily they're removing by congressional order these TSA terrorist scanners. But don't uh, assume, like with Jim, Billy, Jimmy Carter tried to push in the gun control laws, that they're not going to stop. Um, what we need to do is realize it's not just guns, because as I said on previous shows, I have three of many technologies that I know how to make and I'll simply send out the information how to do it. You'd, I won't give you the plans but I'll tell you you can make something much more deadly than a gun with a high speed air compressor um, and a backpack with a solar panel or a small air compressor tank with ball bearings very simple to do using the Bernoulli principle and Venturi principles and actually suck the ball bearings and fire them at rapid sequence 
You can make a particle beam weapon with a rail gun very easily with a welder's flux uh, thing. And you can also create a, a seizure inducing uh, high lumen force <coughs> LED light with a uh, couple to infrasound to the frequency to cause seizure activity at quite a distance from the site of the, of the source. <coughs> so the idea that um, a uh, rogue government, and by the way, we can take down drones, I know how to do that. We can reprogram and we can also take them down with EMP weapons, which I can also t- share. That people can do themselves very simply. You can make EMP an EMP capacitor weapon, by the way, with things like pieces of le- leather, aluminum, glass, and cardboard. And you can make a super capacitor and a, and a uh, parabolic reflector. And it's very simple to build up a, a tremendous charge that you can release over picoseconds. So, this idea that we are uh, helpless, you fools out there that think you're going to crush us, better think twice. You're going to be going into the chicken yard and you're going to be lacerated by raptors that have six inch long titanium claws. It's not going to be an easy game and you're not going to take us down with your little predator drones flying overhead or your sword robots like you did in Iraq. It's not going to be the same kind of uh, game. So think twice. Uh, and tell us about the latest news. You sent me some reports. Yeah. Well, um Earthquakes are down. I had sent out a report last week that uh, I was worried about a large earthquake. That's because we had a new moon, and and uh, the number of earthquakes in the seven-day period was over 400. And the last time that happened, we did get an 8.0 um, earthquake. But that didn't happen this time, and we are now in a, a, a waxing moon, almost at first quarter. And um, we're moving away from perihelion which is when the Earth is closest to the sun. But we have had a lot of volcanic activity. And I'm just, especially around the Ring of Fire, which is around the Pacific Ocean. So starting in the Kamchatka Peninsula, that's on the east coast of Russia, the uh, Plosky and the Kizman volcano are uh, erupted, are erupting. And uh, they haven't generated too much activity. It's mostly just lava flows. Now, moving, uh, moving clockwise, uh, there's four volcanoes in Alaska that have uh, local, uh, what they call volcanic tremors. They look different than regular earthquakes, but they're, they're caught on the seismograms. And that's at Mount Spur, Iliama, Akuktan, and Mekishin. Now, the one at Iliamna has been... Um, having these low-level earthquakes for at least a year, and uh, it's it's very uh, scary because it's close to Anchorage, and Anchorage is on an inlet from the ocean. So if uh, Iliamna should go, should should uh, erupt, it might likely uh, cause a tsunami that would go up the inlet and swamp Anchorage. Yeah, Anchorage um, has had earthquakes, has has tsunamis. In the past century, haven't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's not unusual. And, in fact, the last earthquake they had there, which was just north of Queen Charlotte Island, although it was uh, considered part of Alaska, it um, because Alaska comes, you know, it's got the, um, the edge of Canada there is uh, part of Alaska. So it was designated as uh, the United States instead of Canada. But in any case, it did create a small tsunami. Um, it wasn't much. It was like half a foot, and they only measured it in one place. But that shows the uh, the intention is there that if that well, it's part it's part of the northern extension of this of the San Andreas Fault. So we know what that can do. Yeah, exactly. In other words, the first thing people need to realize is that we had Michael Maluf on last this Wednesday. If we have a major CME coronal mass ejection. It will trigger a superquake in the areas where a lot of recoil is stored up. San Andreas Fault and New Madrid are top targets in America for major quakes, which will cause disruption of cities, power lines, and cause nuclear uh, release of radiation. A American Fukushima is coming if those things happen. Back in a moment. Alexander Bachman and Alexander uh, signing in from Mexico. Of course, uh, you have in a sense of ministry, your website, alexanderbachman.com, you translate. 
into Hispanic as well as uh, English. You have other languages to translate many of your sites. You're a bit of a computer wizard, and you download quickly things that are posted up so they don't disappear off the net and put it on your own servers. Yeah. And um, and what people need to realize is the real world out there, and this is for the audience, of the, both the veterans and the novices who listen to this program, the real world out there don't understand that we only tell them about 10% of what we know. They really couldn't cope with the 90% that we do know, and even the questions we're asked we don't have answers to yet, but the 90% we do know. And the problem is the world is both wonderful, beautiful, and horrifying, but yet our God is God. And he's going to get us through this, but it's going to require a lot of repentance and prayer. It's going to require a lot of honesty in terms of intellectual honesty. It's going to require a lot of asking good questions. And I tell people, don't believe anything we say. We're not trying to create a cult here. What we want to do is we want people to ask better questions. And when they apprehend the truth by researching it themselves and then getting in prayer and getting a confirmation, for God's sakes, do something, anything, than just sit there in the middle of the highway waiting to get hit by a Mack truck whether it's preparedness or spiritual issues, you've got to face the music that the world as we know it is about to change. It's not going to end. It's not the end of the world, but it's going to go through a trial by fire very shortly. Well, one of those trials by fire, you know, now that you mention it, Dr. Deagle, hi, Ann, is uh, something that is affecting the United States out of the Wall Street Journal today. Uh, well, back in November of last year, Miss Sinaloa, uh, you know, one of these pageant, um, uh, uh, beauty pageant winners out of the, you know, the home of the cartel of Sinaloa, where Chapo Guzman was assassinated. And she was um, assassinated with a gun provided by the ATF. Now, this gun that was provided by the ATF was personally sold by an agent from the ATF, and his name is George Gillette. And uh, he subscribed to the ATF, and uh, basically he ended up selling the guns that uh, ended up assassinating uh, this uh, this very important uh, personality in Mexico. So there's a lawsuit now against the U.S. government for uh, basically homicide. Well, Obama is a murderer. Uh, Eric Holder is a murderer. He even covered up Oklahoma City. Uh, the uh, senators and congressmen that collaborated with this uh, and didn't call for a complete disclosure, same thing as Benghazi. I think that there's what I call a complicity when you have authority to make sure it's disclosed and you don't make any, make any effort, whether it's Benghazi or Fast and Furious, why the hell can Congress think they can get away with this by not doing their job? <clears throat> I don't understand it. What I see is they're feeling, they're just feeling it. But we have good news out of Mexico. At least uh, what we're seeing, according to the Marine Secretary, the Secretary of Navy, they're going to uh, start uh, withdraw, uh, withdrawing uh, all military personnel from Mexican streets uh, in a very slow fashion throughout the year. So that's good. At least we're going to get the military off our streets and we can say goodbye to martial law, basically. Well, that's what they say. Another thing is what they do. Uh, so we can't trust any politician. But other good news, uh, which is good news, I believe, out of Fox News today, TSA is going to get rid of the airport body scanners, you know, the ones that... Yeah, they're the already, they already gone. When I, when I flew back through LAX, Houston, and Orlando airports, they weren't there. They were shut down. They were taped up. Yeah, and they they unzip your DNA with these terahertz technologies. Well, do you know very, why? Very because we, our academy put out a statement of a World War moratorium on them, and they knew that if we could call into court, if you have the top environmental organization of physicians on the planet in history, all stating that we'll stand behind a suit against this government, they knew we were going to get they're going to get sued for trillions, not billions, trillions of dollars, because cancer, cataracts, all kinds of horrifying problems including not even having dosimetry cards for the workers down there doing this horrifying work called TSA work. Precisely, and imagine, I mean, if they're going to take them off the, uh, out of the airports by June, then that means that there's going to be thousands of rapists and gropers and child, uh, child molesters out on the streets again. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I know. Oh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a Bachman, it's a Bachmanism. Anyway, yeah. uh, I, I had an interest. I, yeah, right. Uh, I had a chance to talk to uh, to uh, Joel Skousen, and he had an interesting report here. Uh, Joel actually uh, <laughs> always has funny. I said, you know, your your your, uh, your wit and ability to cut through the BS is, is remarkable. So. When I talked to Joel, the first thing he talked about was the executive order 
uh, was a dud. <clears throat> we didn't have an executive order. We had an executive memo. I call it a sticky note. Talk about this for a minute. It, it, what he says here is, as pointed out last week, there's no authority for the president to alter or enact laws through an executive order. He can only give instructions to federal departments re- impl- uh, to, relative to implementing what is already law. Although presidents are always stepping around out o- over these limits. And of course, what he got from his legal staff is if you file an executive order, you're going to be impeached. Interesting, eh? Very, very interesting. Uh, you know, and I believe that uh, if the the NRA and everybody, you know, uh, uh, just man up and stand up against uh, these these tyrants over there in D.C., well, you know, former they're not going to doing anything. Former U.S. Attorney General General, uh, General Edwin Meese, Reagan administration, gave a not so subtle warning to Newsmax that President Obama could be impeached if he bypassed Congress and enacted gun control legislation by executive order. So basically, uh, what he did is he tried to uh, put out these 23 points that were published up by NRA. But the real issue is they re- want to require federal agencies to make relevant data available to the federal background check system. And basically, that's aimed at piercing medical privacy rules on mental health. Uh, which will require a change in law, which can occur. Uh, number one, so that's useless. Number two, addressing unnecessary legal barriers, particularly relating to health insurance, portability, and privacy, accountability act, that prevents states from making information available to the background check system. Uh, and what he's trying to do is force doctors becoming spitznots officers. Number three, improve incentives for states to share information with the background check system, probably money, try to see if they will dump their information. Uh, number four, direct the Attorney General to review categories of individuals prohibited from having a gun. Well, basically what they want to do, too, is say if a vet comes back and has even temporary PTSD, they can't have a gun here. But if we drop them in Baghdad, no problem. You can have a gun, dude. Plus, we'll give you a serotonin reuptake inhibitor, so when you want to go on a killing spree, you'll have no restraint. Uh, number five, propose rulemaking to give law enforcement the ability to run a full background check individual before returning a seized gun. So if they seize your gun, they got to do a full background check after they've seized it. Pretty crazy, hey? Oh, oh, you've know, got a licensed gun, right? Published a letter to the ATF federally licensed gun dealers to provide a guidance on how to run background checks for private sellers. Well, they don't want people to sell their gun to somebody privately. Well, it's their darn business. Um, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's, it's stupid. Uh, it's like... Uh, uh, if somebody starts using bats to kill uh, to kill other people, then they're going to outlaw bats or knives or rocks or whatever. Well, their weapons I, are always going to exist. I, I call and, it what they need to do is have proper health care yep. and mental health care, which is at the state level, not federal. They need to have a system where if the teacher, the health nurse, or anybody activates the system, the, EM, the emergency ambulance can arrive within moments to posy jacket the character and haul them off. And no one, you take the child away from the gun, it's not the gun from the child. Real simple. And these doctors who prescribe these serotonin reuptake inhibitors, they need to see a psychiatrist. Well, that's the main problem. Exactly. Welcome back, and we have Alexander Bachman and Ann Morrison. Uh, Alexander, last Thursday, you did a presentation with Deborah Tavares. You pulled up a PowerPoint and presented it. You have it on your website, alexanderbachman.com. Converted from PDF to uh, PowerPoint. Tell us some of the high points you mentioned in that interview, because you know, I want to follow up with some further things about the uh, the gun issues. But the reason why all this is converging is they want to mutate the U.S. Federal Reserve after they collapse the economy and devalue the currency into the mark of the beast. They want to disarm the public, and they want to actually have predator drones and sword operational robots, uh, bots we call it. And in fact, this presentation was given to bots, Borgs, and humans in 2025. There was an actual presentation for which agency? Uh, NASA, of all places, which we know is a private corporation. It's not really a a part of the U.S. government. And we know that the Nazis like Werner von Braun work there. So it doesn't surprise us that the Nazis are at it again. Yeah, I know they use the uh, the eponym of National uh, Aeronautics and Space Agency, but the word NASA is a Hebrew word meaning high and lifted up. And the one that's high and lifted up is Satan. So what we're dealing with is the word NASA is a uh, hoodwink term to indicate the hoodwinking by the dark one, the, uh, the, the, the dark angel, or the angel of light, he calls himself Lucifer, which is the bringer, bringer of darkness, not light. And in fact, NASA is a, the same thing as JPL, Jet Propulsion Labs, totally populated by Satanists. 
What's interesting now, you mentioned that because they they uh, they basically diminish the human species into uh, a state of. Uh, uh, f- feeble, feebleness, and saying that we need uh, an upgrade. And basically, welcome to the, to the age of the bots and the cyborgs by the year 2025. So they cannot do it if uh, we still have independent sovereign nations with constitutions uh, working and Congress is up and running. They need to collapse the whole thing into their world government thing by 2018 if they want to go with this. So right. they want to integrate, we know, nano, nanotechnological, nanotechnolo- uh, biological, cognitive sciences, and information sciences in one unique platform with this ultra sensor grid. Uh, they want to put sensors everywhere. Even they want to make a nano dust that they're going to release into the atmosphere where they can just monitor it within the air over a city anything that happens in real time via the internet. Yeah, what they're going to do is put this, embed the smart dust into buildings, roadways, sidewalks walls everywhere and the nanodots will actually communicate with chips that are in your body chips in your vaccine chips in your pills chips in your food and what happens is the smart dust acts as a interface so that the uh what's called a tracker distance gets right down to less than a meter and they can know exactly who you are where you are even your biological markers what's your blood pressure your pulse what are your thoughts uh, in fact their whole idea is to eventually create what's called a brain interface chip so uh, in the future they won't need to get a new computer or an ipad They'll have an interface chip so they'll see what you see, hear what you hear, and literally, like that movie Truman, everything you experience is downloaded to a database in a supercomputer. And people That's think, oh, oh, Dr. Diggle, you're exaggerating. No, I'm not. In fact, if people have, if I have enough time, I can give them enough specifications, I will scare the hell out of them, literally. But the fact is, people think that we just have a vivid imagination when we don't. We're literally, literally the sons of Issachar at the very time of the end of this aeon, and it's not the end of the world telling people if they don't repent to the most high God, we're going to be literally decayed into a cyborg world where people will be drones in a hive mind monstrosity where even some human beings will basically say, I'd rather just be loaded up in a rack and suspended an animation and enter cyber world and do and be a role play, whatever I want to be. Exactly, and all they need is artificial intelligence, and I'm going to give the names out. I mean, the people responsible of this are Edomite Juice, and including uh, we have uh, uh, what's his name? I forget his name right now. This you're is about the guy behind that. Singularity and Transhumanism. Uh, you're, you're talking about Ray, Ray, Ray Kurzweil. Ray Kurzweil. He's financing the entire artificial intelligence program with uh, this guy who who's an Australian, but he has a PhD and lives in China, of all things. Uh, I can't remember his name right now. I'd have to open up my PowerPoint. But anyway. <laughs> These guys are very well advanced into artificial intelligence and brain engineering. Then we have Cynthia, this artificial uh, DNA that's already a self-replicating DNA life form. They have uh, out of San Diego and Irvine, they already have these uh, uh, self-replicating DNAs. And basically they created uh, an artificial organism uh, through computing. And it's really, really scary stuff because now they can't stop it because they said, we can't go back on what we already started. Now we're going to have robotic everything, and we're going to have these uh, these things created. And they want to create attacks within the United States. They want to, uh, they also mentioned torturing people live on CNN in the PowerPoint presentation uh, in order to start, uh, you know, conditioning society into accepting these changes. So I believe that we're going to be seeing a world catapulted into a technological revolution, a nanotechnological revolution. Once these nano critters start getting out into that, into everywhere, uh, it's going to be bad. They talk about the choo-choo eating robot, which is a flesh plant eating robot that hunts uh, uh, and eats human flesh. All right? So... These things are coming because this is the, the part of uh, what Chris Everard out of the U.K. used to talk about in his excellent documentaries that I recommend called Super State. They're about all of these visions that Aleister Crowley and John D. had. John D. was a military strategist but out of the U.K., one of the most brilliant military strategists at that, and how they envisioned a satanic, luciferian world where robots and artificial intelligence would control society as a whole. Well, in 2003, 
In 2003, the AI supercomputer was launched at Shriver Air Force Base. With the intelligence of a superior human being, but the capacity to think at 150 trillion times faster than the human mind, with access to every database on Earth. And that day, that central node is at Shriver Air Force Base. There are also nodes in Britain, Jakarta, Indonesia, Moscow, uh, Tokyo, Japan, etc. around the world, and they're all linked by underground maglev trains by fiber optic tunnels. So even if the satellites go down, these systems will still exist because they're fiber optic and they're ground based. <clears throat> And the drone technology is also very dangerous. I mean, uh, one just has to refer to uh, e- Eon Flux, this movie with uh, uh, with this actress. What's her name? Uh, Charlize Theron or something like that. Right, Charlize. Yeah. Yeah. Th- this this woman. She did a movie. Uh, uh, it's, uh, that movie is just an incredible movie because it talks about that future that these people want to create. And uh, for me, this is beyond hellish and scary, because this is going on now. I mean, I did two years of research into transhumanism and the entire agenda. I read all the books there are, presentations, everything, and I even lectured on the topic. Now they're going at it at full speed. So it's Ray Kurzweil. That's the enemy, right, that's behind all of this, in tandem with uh, DARPA and the U.S. military and everybody trying to bring this out into the open, and acclimating everybody to give up their guns and then go into the nano grid. You see, it's the nano grid where we're going to control everything through nano sensors everywhere. Just don't give them your data and don't give them your fingerprints either. You know. Well, by by the way, by this May, uh, it was everybody in America was supposed to have a national uh, biometric ID. They kicked it down the can down two years because this year the uh, Fed Reserve actually runs out on uh, Christmas Eve. So they want to replace it by the end of this year with a new system. And their real plan is, and I've said this before, but I want people to understand, what I'm saying is not just my opinion. This is a thus saith the Lord. The system of the Federal Reserve, which is neither Federal Reserve, will mutate into a World Reserve Bank, not the BRICS like they talked about proposing. Eventually it will be the basis for a biometric ghost currency where all other legal tender, including actual physical money, gold, silver coins, even bartering, is illegal, and the only currency that's legal is virtual currency transferred by biometric opening codes from your retinal scan, your fingerprints, and your hair hurts body scan. So in other words, the mark of the beast. That system is coming. And people say, oh, it's scary, it's scary, it's scary. Look, if you have your trust in the Most High God, you don't need to be scared because fear comes from the dark side. What we're going to do, if you're not prepared, is going to be so shocking. It says in Luke 21 that men's hearts will fail for fear of what is coming upon the earth. Just don't let anybody put a needle in your body, because that's how they're going to get the nano chips to cling to your pineal well, plant. Guess what? If they want to give Dr. Deagle a vaccine, I have a, a vaccine for them, but it contains a lot of lead. <laughs> Welcome back, and also in Mexico, a few other points you gave uh, during the break. Alexander, talk about them, because uh, Mexico and Canada are planning to be taken over by the United States as Area 3 in the 10-area zone of the World Trade Zone of the uh, new world government. Uh, my guess is during the second term of Obama, a couple of things I think are highly probable. Not, I'm not going to say this prophetic, but number one, we're going to move to a biometric uh, American ID by... Uh, May of 2015, according to the government officials and websites, you can Google it yourself if you don't believe me. Number two, we're going to see a, a collapse of the dollar and move toward a world reserve bank where the dollar will eventually become completely what we call ghost money or biometric. We'll see uh, the peace treaty authorized by Obama as the rebuilding of the Herodian Temple after the neutralized Bashar Assad. It may not be dead, but what they'll do is neutralize him politically. And there'll be backroom deals with the Russians. We'll see the amalgamation of Russia and Eastern Europe with uh, Western Europe. And we'll see those two legs of the Roman Empire that are in the statue of of Daniel, where, in fact, the resurrected Roman Empire isn't just Western Europe. It includes Russia, and Russia will be the dominant, if you want to call it, beast empire. They control the gas and oil. They also have the the heavy heavy, uh, throwaway weapon systems, including their Russian-based new uh, air jets, their nuclear weapons, etc. So... The Russian leader will be the, quote, the beast dictator of Europe, both Eastern and Western Europe. And the new empire 
of Eastern and Western Europe will be the prescient empire on Earth, uh, more powerful than America or China, and uh, will have an amalgamation of the power of the West with America in this new unified Europe. And I believe this is all going to happen, and they're doing a lot of test laboratory things in Mexico. Tell us about some of them, uh, Alexander, because this is what they want to do to America, and they're already testing in the laboratory in Canada and in Mexico now about uh, biometric IDs. Tell us all about it. Okay. In Mexico, we have the, the equivalent to the IRS, which is called the SAT, which is the SAT, as in Satan, SAT. And when, the new thing this, uh, this uh, year is that whenever you go in there, and, well, they started in the middle of last year. Whenever you go in there, you need to sign up for an electronic signature. Now, they say it's an electronic signature, but what it really is, they, they, you go there and they, they, t they ask you to put your ten fingers on scanners, these green scanners, and then they want to scan your irises. Now, for them, that's the new signature. People to operate your own business within Mexico, and if you don't do it, they won't give you the permit that they generally issue, so you can print your own invoices. Because you need a permit to print your invoices in Mexico. If not, you can't operate at all. So most of the people, since they don't know their rights, they don't even read the the, the Constitution for uh, for Christ's sakes. Basically, they comply. So when you don't comply, the personnel get all crazy and they just. Get out of here. You're making too much noise, right? That's what happened to you, so you didn't get uh, forced to comply. Exactly. Uh, <clears throat> so where's all of this going? Well, I believe that all this is going. is like right now in Mexico, remember last year they started databasing all the children with these biometrics, and then they stopped doing it because now it turns out that it was a voluntary program, and now they suspended the program. So they're just experimenting one after another. We have the same thing right now with um, with the Mexican passport. If you don't get your biometrics into the federal databases, you don't get your passport. But if you protest and do make a lot of noise, then they don't scan you. So you see, it's all voluntary, but they're coercing people and sheepling them, you know, uh, uh, sh sh like shepherds, you know, moving them along. Come on, move along, move along to electronic uh, databasing. And, you know, they're not going to win, but they're doing it as an experiment here in order to... Uh, uh, perfect it and start applying it by force inside the United States. I, I have no yeah. doubt about that. Yeah, the problem is that they're going to succeed in America. They won't succeed for two reasons. First, that Americans are armed. Second is, America has enough conservative Christians that understand the Bible. We will fight. Fight to the death, actually, when they try this kind of stuff. And Obama and his advisors realize that Obama will be immediately impeached. In fact, as I mentioned, a couple other things in this gun thing, which basically they want to trace guns, they want information on stolen guns, they want to nominate a new ATF director, well, the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms, they did Oklahoma City, they did Fast and Furious, what the heck are they talking about? Why don't they just abolish the agency? And then uh, proper training for active shooter situations, how about letting uh, concealed carry permits by teachers and maintenance staff and principals, and then there wouldn't be any shooters. Secondly, anybody can pull a whistle. And that kid would have probably gone to a psychiatric facility and uh, never got near guns because he would actually be in a facility where he would be kept there for good and committed. Because that kid probably should have never been able to get to his mother's guns and she should have probably had active safes, which is easy. He passed a law saying, properly store your guns because if you have a crime committed, you'll be liable and get jail time. Real simple. <clears throat> so, you know, you got to give some responsibility to people. You can't make a law against any potential abnormality. But you do have to have fix, under, understand what the problem is. Um, what I think the next big issue that's going to be is the debt ceiling. What's happening in Mexico? Do the, do the, the Mexican government, are they concerned about what's happening in America? Because we're going to hit it by the end of this month or at the latest early mid-March. Well, here they're, I, here they're confiscating the guns at rapid speeds right now. Right, because I think what's going to happen, and this is my guess, Based on all the analysis of everything conjoined, I think that by this spring, early summer, we're going to have a bank holiday for at least five to ten days. They'll devalue the currencies, and they're going to move American, uh, the so-called the Federal Reserve maybe, but it really is not the Federal Reserve of the United States. It'll become more a reserve for the world, which is why it's giving trillions of dollars to European countries and to oil countries in the Middle East. <clears throat> so I think what you're going to see happen is they'll eventually mutate the Fed Reserve into a World Reserve Bank, and uh, the primary denominated dollar, believe it or not, is still the U.S. dollar. And so the dollar won't, in a sense, drop as fast. I talked to Joel Skousen about this. The reason why the dollar is not dropping is because 
other every other country is printing as much money as us, only they're worse off than we are, and they don't have the giant reserve of money out there. So when we print so many billions of dollars, it doesn't inflate our currency. When other countries print so many billions of whatever currency they have, their dollar inflates much faster than us. So they actually, every other country on earth is worse off than us, and it's all relative. <clears throat> so what I think is going to happen is you're going to see... The globalists want to do this game so they can eventually have a biometric world currency. And the Bible tells us that's the mark of the beast. Now, people say that can't happen. And I've said this on the show before. <clears throat> I'm going to repeat it. Um, I'm not presuming to be this or that person or, or whatever at this point in time. But I want you to understand out there. In 1993, October 10th, I was praying face down. I was taken supernaturally and shown the city from which the mark of the beast would come. That turned out to be Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs is the alternate capital of the United States if there's an incoming nuclear war. It is the, the place where they have the bunker for the president. He visited there on several occasions in his first term. We have a situation where NORAD, U.S. Space Command, Strategic Defense, and Star Wars are all based there. And the fact is that <clears throat> if there's a cataclysm striking the other coast, they want it in the center of the continent and underground bases that are linked, directly linked to DIA. The underground city, which is set, is 81 square miles with multiple levels going down miles. So what people need to understand is that <clears throat> the Satanists are running this world and they're getting ready to truncate the human species by killing everybody above ground, by precipitating nuclear war and pestilence. And if there is a extinction level event that could be averted just like the stories we heard from John Moore about some incoming comments and in fact I got a report yesterday from Professor McCanny and uh, I can kind of read off what he said here he said uh, <clears throat> just saw the latest report from the near JPL page that stated that the DA-14 will pass no closer than 3.2 Earth uh, radii which is close but no need for Bruce Willis or NASA to save the world this time Strange, however, there was so-called high-level security agency press leak that NASA had two spacecraft sent to intercept the asteroid. Uh, put your hip uh, boots on, <laughs> he says. Plus, government disinfo agent Phil Plate stated at a tent meeting that NASA now has the, this capacity. Yeah, sure, you betcha, he says. They cannot put a mouse into space on a two-year notice. All very strange timing. I'd rather... Uh, pounded on this lately so possibly they realized how foolish they were going to look and pull back. P.S. <clears throat> basically he's got a news release and it's on his uh, radio show which of course is his own uh, radio show, uh, Professor McCanny. We're going to have him back on in the next week or so but people need to realize there's some very weird things going on and the average person thinks that when we're telling them this it is uh, fantasy. It's not fantasy. Uh, I was a doctor, as a contract doctor for U.S. Space Command, and I can tell you what's happening to our world, what's likely to happen to our planet. The globalists don't want to protect us from even a CME that will knock out our entire power grid. As William, uh, as Michael Maloof said on, on Wednesday, 30 years inside the government and multiple agencies, our government are a bunch of criminal Satanists, and they're not going to protect the population from anything, including financial collapse. What they want is control. They want to destroy our dollar, and they want us to be a trade zone in a global elite system that is laid right out in the Bible. Closing comments, Anne or, or uh, Alexander. Thank you very much, Dr. Deagle. Uh, I'll, I'll catch you guys in two weeks because I'm going to go giant hunting in Baja, California. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> You said giant hunting? Yeah, we have evidence of the Nephilim giants here in Baja, California. We're going to go oh, document wow. everything. Yeah, document it, get back to me. Uh, thank you, Ann. Amazing program today. Check it out in Encore Sunday evening. May